Hello everyone, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shavastav. In the series of the binary trees, today we'll discuss about the lowest common ancestor. Let's look at the problem statement and try to understand what the lowest common ancestor is. So here is a tree given to us. And in this tree, if we have to find out the lowest common ancestor, then we must first understand what the lowest common ancestor is. In this tree, we can level the nodes as uh, this. The root will be at level number zero. Node number seven and nine will be at level number one. Then node 2, 6, 9 will be at level number 2. And node 5, 11 and 5 will be at level number 3. So if we have to find out the lowest common ancestor of, let's say, the node 2 and node number 11, then the node, if we talk about the low, node number 11, then it is at level 3. So every node on the path from this node to the root node will be its ancestor. It means 6 at level number 2, it will be its ancestor. 7 at loan number 1, uh, level number 1, that will also be its ancestor. And 1 at level 0, that will also be its ancestor. Similarly, if I pick the node 2, then all the path going from this node to the root, in this case, it is this one and this one, it means the 7 is its, is its ancestor and 1 is also its ancestor. So if I, if I have been given the two nodes, that's it, 2 and 11, then there is a path which is going from this node to the root node. And wherever the path is meeting, that is at node 7, that is the lowest common ancestor of these two nodes. The ancestor or the common ancestor for 2 and 11 are 1 also. But out of 1 and 7, 7 is appearing at a lower level and 1 is appearing at a higher level. So we have to find out the node appearing at a lower level than the higher level. Let's take another example to understand this lowest common ancestor concept. Let's say we have been given two nodes, 7 and 14, and we have to find out the lowest common ancestor of these two nodes. So the ancestors of these, uh, this node 7 will be 6, 5, 2, and 1. So I'm writing this 6, 5, 2, and 1 are the ancestors. And for node number 14, the ancestors are 13, 5, 2, and 1. So 13, 5, 2, and 1. So you can see that the 6 is not matching with 13, but 5 is matching with 5. It means this is the lowest common ancestor of these two nodes. It means the node, the common node or the common ancestor of both of these nodes, which is at the lower level. So this is five. Let's take another example to understand the concept of the lowest common ancestor. Let's say we have a tree like one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So if I have been asked to find out the lowest common ancestor of node, let's say four and two. So in that case, the lowest common, the ancestors of four will be three, two, and one. And for node number two, the ancestor will be one only. So we can say that the ancestor or the common ancestor for these two nodes are one, but not it is not the case because if the if the earlier node or the one of the node is following the same path as that of the given node, it means if we have to find out the lowest common ancestor of four and two, and if the ancestors of four is crossing two, then we will say that the two is the lowest common ancestor of these two nodes. It means the lowest common ancestor may be the node itself. So it means that out of the four and the two, if they are following the same path, then whichever the, whichever of these two nodes it is at the upper level will actually be the lowest common ancestor. Let's take another example for similar kind of the situation. So one, two, three, and four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. So if I have been asked to find out the lowest common ancestor of node eight, 
and node 2. In that case, the ancestors of the 8 will be equals to 7, 6, 5, 2 and 1 and the ancestor of 2 will be only 1. But since this, these two are going through the same path and node 2 is lying on the same path, then 2 will be the lowest common ancestor. It means in the lowest common ancestor, we will be considering the node also. So we had, we had to find out the lowest common ancestor of 2 and 8. The common ancestor, the ancestors of 2 was only 1, but the ancestors of 8 is 7, 6, 5, 2, 1. Since these two are following the same path, hence the node out of 2 and 8, which is at the upper level, will be considered as the lowest common ancestor. So let's, let's try to understand how to write the algorithm for the same. Let's take a fresh example. Now in this tree, if we have to find out the ancestors or the lowest common ancestors of four and eight, then what I'm considering that if uh, I am at a leaf node, then we have to find out the match of these two data values. It means in the tree, we have to find out the data value of the node, which contains four and eight, it means I have to search for any node that contains 4 or 8. So let's start with the root node. Obviously, the root node neither contains 4 nor contains 8. So we will have to go towards the left and search for 4 and 8. And I have to go towards the right also and search for 4 and 8. So this node is also neither 4 nor 8. So I have to go towards the left and search for four or eight and we have to go towards the right also to search for four and eight. If I go towards the left, then the left node contains four. It means this is the target value. So if I achieve the target value, I return this node. It means I am returning the address of this. Node. So from this path, I am returning four. If I go towards the right, this is not the target node. And this is not the leaf node also. So I will have to go to left and right to make a search for the node uh, containing the information four or eight. This node on the left contains six, which is neither four nor eight. So there is no match from this leaf node. So I will be returning a value null from here meaning that I could not find the element 4 or 6 on this path. If I reach to this node, then there is uh, this is not the leaf node. So I will have to make the search towards the left and search towards the right also. If I go towards the left, this is the node which is matching with 4 and 8. Hence, this is our target value. I will be returning the address of node number 8 from here. From the right, I am not getting anything. From the right, I am not getting anything. I am only getting null. So the null will also return a null. So from both the paths out of 7, it means from left and right, on the left hand side, I am getting 8. And from the right hand side, I am getting a null. So out of 8 and null, I will select 8 as the answer. Similarly, for the 5, the one of the value returned is null from the left and one of the value returned from the right is 8. So I will be selecting the 8 from here. Fine. Now, if I am getting two data values, let's say 4 from here and then 8 from here, it means the two paths are returning the all those valid nodes which we were searching for, then this node, whatever this node is, is our lowest common ancestor and I will return this node to the parent node which is calling this function. So I'm returning two from here. And then I will have to make a search towards the right also because I have done the search in the left recursively. I have to do the search from the, uh, at the right also. The right node is a leaf node and this is neither four nor eight. 
Hence, I will be returning a null from it. Since I get a 2 and a null from the root node, I will be returning 2. It means I am returning the address of the node number 2 as the answer. So this is the lowest common ancestor. Let's take another tree and try to understand the same process. So let's say I have a binary tree 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And here I have 7, 6, 8. Let's say I have been asked to find out the lowest common ancestor of 3 and a6. So for finding out the lowest common ancestor of 3 and 6, I will be I will be making this search like this. I am here at this node and I am searching for lowest common ancestor of 3 and 6. So this node is neither a leaf node nor a null node. So I will move towards the left to find out the LCA and move towards the right also to find out the LCA. If I go to the left, because in the recursion, the left one will be picked first, this node is not a target node. And this node is neither the leaf node nor the null node. So I will go towards the left to find the same and right to find the same. Since left is null, so we are getting a null from here. And on the right, I am getting a 3, which is the target value. So I will be returning the data value of this node. So since I have got this, so 3 is the return from here. For 2, on the left hand side, we are getting a null. And on the right hand side, we are getting the 3. So 2 and 3 will be give, giving us the 3, which is a return of this node from the left. Now, since I have searched for the left and I have to search for the right also, so I'm picking up this node, which is not the target node, means this is either 3 or 6. Then we have to see if uh, this is a leaf node. No, this is not the leaf node. This is not a null node, so I'm going towards the left to find the same, going toward the right to find the same. On the left, I get a 6, which is one of the values out of 3 and 6. So I will be returning this node from here. From the right, I have a null. So this will be returning a null. So out of uh, the 6 and the null, 6 is selected from here. So you can see that the uh, for the root node, since this is returning a 6, left hand side is 3 and right hand side is 6. It means we have we are finding both the things from here. It means that this node itself is the lowest common ancestor for the given node. So let me try to write the algorithm for the same. And the algorithm for the LCA is very straightforward. Let's say I have been given the address of the root node and the x and the y for which I have to find out the lowest common ancestor. If I land up in the null node, in that case, I'll be returning null, obviously. And then there may be a possibility that I land up to the node which contains either x or y. So if I am getting the data value of the current node as x, or the current the data value of the current node is y. It means this is the target node, and I will be returning the address of this node as the answer. But if this is not the case, so I will have to search for on the left, and then I will have to search the right also. So I make a decision to travel towards the left, call the same function recursively, and let's say the answer returned by this is L, and then I again uh, call the same function to traverse on the right and let's say the answer returned by this is L. This is R. Now out of the L and the R, I have, will have to make a decision. There are three different possibilities. The possibility is like uh, this is the node and from the left I am getting a null and from the right I am getting a valid node. In that case, this right will be picked by us as a LCA. And if I am getting a valid node from the left and a null from the right, then the val uh, null from the right then will pick the left one as the answer. But if I am getting 
the two valid addresses from the left and from the right, then I'll return the address of the root node itself as the LCU. So let's write these three things here. If L is equals to null, then I'll return Y means R, right child. Otherwise, not the right child, but the answer returned from the right call of LCU. And then if R is null, right is null, then I'll return the L. Otherwise, if left is not null and right is not null, it means that I'm getting a valid node from the left and the right both. Hence, I'll return the root node itself or the T itself that will be the lowest common ancestor. Now, let me try to run this at the code block. So here is a code for the LCA, which says that the address of the root node T is given. X and the data values are also given to us. These are the three parameters through which I have called the function. If T is null, then I'm returning a null. Otherwise, if the node contains X or Y, then I'll be returning the address of the node. Otherwise, I'll call towards the left. Let's say the answer returned by the left call is L. Then I'll call towards the right and let's say the answer returned is R. Both of these are the addresses of the node. If L is null, then I'll be returning the right one. If R is null, I'll be returning the left one. And if L and R both are not null, I'll be returning the parent node itself. And this will be the lowest common ancestor. Now let me make a call from uh, the, the, the main and in the main Let's say I select two data values, X and Y of our choice. So let me take the tree that we took in the whiteboard. If I select the same tree and run this code, and let's decide that uh, the lowest common ancestor has to be found for three and six as they're in, the, in this tree. Then the data value of X will be three and the data value of uh, y will be 6. Let me call this and whatever the uh, values returned by the LCA function, I have taken that in L and then have printed the data value of that node as the answer. So let me run this. Uh, this is asking us to input a tree. So let's take, take the same tree as we took in the whiteboard. Here the root node is 1 and the left of 1 is 2. Left of 2 does not exist. The right of 2 is 3. Left of 3 exists, that is 4. Left and the right does not exist for 4. The right of 3 exists and that is 5. The left and the right of 5 does not exist. The right of 1 exists and the right of 1 is 7. Left of seven is six. Left of six does not exist. Right of a six exists and that is eight. Left and the right for eight does not exist. Right for seven also does not exist. You can see that the LCA of three and six, this is the answer. The LCA of three and six is one, the root node. Here is this. Here is six, we follow this path. The six follows this path and the lowest common ancestor for this is one. So I hope you can implement this very easily at your systems. Thank you so much for watching this video.